Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We are a plant-based sports nutrition company, but not just for sports, for everyone who's interested in health and fitness. All right. Before we get started, always do the disclaimer. This video is intended for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. But we are going to be talking about a health issue, especially for men, prostate. Yeah, only for men. Women don't have a prostate. But prostate, prostate health is so important. Actually, prostate cancer is the second most common cancer in men globally. 1.4 million new cases per year, accounting for almost 8% of all cancers on this planet. It's a serious problem, and we're not addressing it sufficiently because it's increasing a year over year. It's actually one of the faster increasing um, health issues in men. So why is that? Well, Normally, DHT, which is produced by the body uh, from the conversion of testosterone, would be a good thing for those going through puberty. That's right. Young men going through puberty uh, who secrete DHT or create DHT to help the masculinization process. We also do this in the womb uh, because we all start out as female <laughs> and we convert to male with the introduction of testosterone and DHT. So that's what masculinizes men. But once we're masculinized, once we're a fully bone men past puberty, DHT doesn't really serve much of a purpose in our bodies. As a matter of fact, continual too high rates of DHT can lead to male pattern baldness in both men and women, uh, unwanted hair growth, uh, aging, premature aging of the skin and wrinkling, uh, acne, uh, prostate uh, problems, and more. So you can see that this DHT, both for men and women, is not a good thing. And it should naturally decline with age because we really don't need it. Once you're a man, you're a man. That's it. You don't get any more manly by uh, creating more DHT. That's not how it works. It's there for the conversion. Uh, to help us make that uh, change, those changes, deepening of the voice, um, hair growth, et cetera. But when you've got too much stimulation of hair growth and the opposite can happen, you can actually kill the hair follicles leading to baldness. Well, all right. So the very first product I ever launched was a product called Sublock 80. And it got its name Subblock 80 because of one really cool thing. This cactus flower, DM33, was shown in research to actually inhibit DHT from, um, from being produced from testosterone. So normally you keep your testosterone. Let's go ahead and take a look at this pathway here. So this is the pathway. The body will produce DHEA, which is the master hormone there at the bottom. And then it will convert to uh, androstenedione, dione, which then will convert to testosterone. And much of the testosterone then is bound right there in the middle by sex hormone binding globulin or SHBG. So that binding globulin is a good thing because it binds that testosterone and holds it until the body needs it. That way, you know, things like cancer cells can't utilize it. So it keeps it safe and protected from being used for things that it shouldn't be used for. And then it can release that binding globulin and release the free testosterone. So that's the next step in the ladder. But once your body gets uh, elevated levels of free testosterone in both men and women, it can then convert to estrogen through the enzyme aromatase or to DHT on the right hand side by the enzyme 5 alpha reductase. Okay, so in doing so, you are losing testosterone to both estrogen and DHT. The estrogen can cause uh, unwanted side effects like uh, fat gain, 
a water retention, uh, breast growth in, in men, um, not so much in women, because women are already prepared for that. Um, but that's uh, why guys don't want that added estrogen. Women don't want that added estrogen because uh, piling on estrogen uh, can lead to the conversion of estradiols and dienes, E2 and E3s, which are much more powerful and can stimulate um, errant cells to metastasize, which can be very dangerous. So that's not wanted either. Most women produce all the estrogen that they need through their ovaries or through their own fat cells. Fat cells produce estrogen on their own. So there's no need for this extra estrogen to be coming from testosterone for women. And guys don't want this extra estrogen because it actually can downregulate through a negative feedback loop the production of testosterone, lowering testosterone is called estrogen dominance. So neither gender wants this excess estrogen and neither gender needs this excess DHT once you're past puberty if you're male. The DHT again can, high DHT levels can lead to male pattern baldness, aging and wrinkling of the skin. Um, in women, it can deepen the voice or, or uh, cause hair loss in women too as well. Um, but the big issue here is the DHT is directly related to and associated with prostate issues, specifically benign prostate hyperplasia. And that's where it can become a real, real health problem. So when I was interested in um, trying to create a product that helped both men and women optimize their levels of testosterone because testosterone is important for both men and women for strength gains, for libido, for uh, healthy uh, muscle repair, um, for uh, lots of different healthful functions, better sleep, more energy levels, uh, better muscle growth, better muscle tone, uh, better strength, all these positive things that testosterone does for the body for both men and women is great. And obviously sometimes stress, bad diet, lack of exercise can put pressure and down re regulate the production of testosterone. So how do we use herbs and plants to help bring back up those natural levels of testosterone to their normal healthy optimal levels without calling that causing that spillover, either converting to estrogen or DHT with the negative side effects, both of what uh, most people don't want. That's why I was so excited when I found DM33 is the cactus flower. You can see the cactus flower there on the right hand side. And this is the uh, studies that were done on it. And these are human cell studies. They took human cells on the uh, estrogen side. They used um, uh, uh, gosh, I forgot what kind of cells. His female cells, female organ cells. I think it was um, uh, uterine cells because they have a high affinity for estrogen. And on the uh, DHT side, they took prostate cells um that were they were grown in petri dishes so they added them to them and found an inhibition of up to 80 percent or more of estrogen this inhibits or blocks the body's conversion of testosterone to both estrogen and dht now this is really cool because i've never seen anything in the natural products industry that actually sh shows this type of effect at this level in both areas, both, you, you see some plants are good at inhibiting estrogen, but if you block just estrogen, you can actually run the risk of the body producing more DHT. So that's not a good thing. So some estrogen blockers, if they don't also block DHT, can actually end up possibly promoting actually more production of DHT, not what you want. Same with DHT. Sometimes if you just block DHT, you can actually force the production of the body to convert more to estrogen, not what you want. So when I found a plant that actually did both and to about the same amount, about 80%, which remember is where cell block 80 gets its name from. The cell block 80 with DM33, this is the cactus flower, the DM33 that was actually used in the study. And so I was so excited. I'm like, wow, keeps the testosterone for both men and women and prevents that enzyme. It blocks that enzyme from converting to estrogen and DHT. 
this can be really helpful. All right, but let's look at more than just what this particular cactus plant can do. Let's look at some of the research. This first study just came out last year. It's a 2021 study, and it says the effects of exercise and cardiorespiratory fitness um, and biochemical progression in men with localized prostate cancer under active surveillance, the ERACE randomized clinical trial. So this is an RCT, consider the gold standard, randomized RCT, randomized clinical trial. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put this in the uh, comment section so that you can um, actually see it. Let me get to the comments here and post. And then I'll pull it up on the screen. Uh, so those of you watching at home or don't happen to see it in the comments section, there it is. So this is an August 2021 study uh, just last year. Um, and what did they find? So they were using HIT, which is stands for high interval uh high intensity interval training. So this is a cardio technique, but it's very intense training technique um, uh, to elicit a more a pronounced effect. So they had people um, doing this for 12 weeks, uh, three times a week, and, um, and up to 85 to 95 percent peak oxygen consumption. So they were really pumping it out, meaning they were maximizing their VO2. Okay. So in the ERASE trial, they demonstrated, and I'll quote directly from the study, the conclusions and relevance. The ERASE trial demonstrate that HIT increased cardiorespiratory fitness levels, of course, <laughs> but decreased PSA levels. So this is the prostate uh, antigen that, that is a measure or marker if there's issues or inflammation in the prostate. This is uh, PSA is something that you will get measured if you're a male over 40. That's one of the very first things they'll measure if you go to the doctors is your PSA. A high PSA will, could be an indicator that you have issues with the prostate. So uh, back to the quote, it uh, obviously it increased fitness levels, but it decreased PSA levels. It decreased PSA velocity and prostate cancer cell growth in men with already localized prostate cancer who were under active surveillance. Now, this is really interesting because it, it not only decreased the PSA amount, it decreased the velocity. So that's how much it was gaining. So it slowed the growth too as well and while decreasing it. That's really important. That means you're showing actually a, a partial reversal of the progression of the prostate. So this was pretty exciting that just HIT exercise alone could improve uh, prostate health. Okay, so what about a plant-based diet though? Okay, so I'm gonna put up this one because this one actually shows some interesting results too as well. Let me put this in there. Oh, let me grab the link. Oops. I don't have the link. Okay, let me just go on the screen. So this next study is right on the screen below. It's the effect of plant and animal-based foods on prostate cancer risk. Okay, so I'll read the conclusion to you. Um, this was a, uh, a review of 297 different studies. So I like meta-analysis and reviews. Reviews take a look at, hey, let's look at the whole body of research out there. Let's weed out the bad studies, the studies that weren't done very well or didn't have any or had mixed results or confounded results because of something else that's going on. It. Let's narrow it down to the good studies and including lots of participants in it, large cohort studies, many participants and stuff like this. So looking at tens of thousands of people, so large in group and large number of studies, 297 studies in this one, they found the conclusions, this review of the literature, quote, suggests that consumption of higher amounts of plant-based foods may be associated with decreased prostate cancer risk and consumption of higher amounts of dairy products may be associated with increased risk 
of prostate cancer. So really clearly that plants with all their fiber, with all their um, different sources of protein, with all these natural uh, vitamins and polyphenols and antioxidants could combine have a positive effect on prostate, a decreased prostate risk. And those consuming dairy had a much higher risk. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, what happens when we combine these two effects and I'll put up this next study. When you add a plant-based diet with exercise. So in the very first one, we talked about exercise, reducing the risk of prostate cancer, actually reducing the pro progression of people who already were established to have prostate cancer, maybe even possibly trending towards reversing that prostate cancer or healing that prostate cancer. That's exciting just from exercise. This one shows a huge meta-analysis that the more, basically, the more plants you eat and the less meat and dairy consumed, the better off you're going to be as far as the risk of prostate cancer. Uh, okay, so this next study is uh, intensive lifestyle changes may affect the progression of prostate cancer. So this is looking at people who already potentially had prostate cancer and looking how it's progressing. So. This is interesting in that it, um, those in the study group where they incorporated a healthy plant-based diet as well as uh, intensive exercise. So it's a lifestyle and diet change. And they found a decreased 4% in the experimental group, but the group that wasn't uh, changing their diet and exercise had a 6% increase. So this is uh, pretty amazing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put up this next one um, because it's, it's kind of mind blowing what the difference was in this. I, I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the screen, but I'll also read it to you as well. So the growth of this particular form of prostate cancer, prostate cancer cells was inhibited almost eight times more from the experimental group, those incorporating more plants and healthful plant food, whole food diet into their uh, things with exercise more than the control group. Eight times, that's 800% in, in improvement over those who did not use a healthful plant-based diet and exercise. I mean, that's just mind blowing why you would not want to do that. Remember, you know, this is, this is the, the second most common cancer in men in the entire world. I mean, why would you put you want to put yourself at risk for that? And so easy, just eating more plants and exercising can reduce your risk by eight times, 800%. Why wouldn't you want to do that? I mean, you know, I when I hear about meat is masculinity, and, and it's so just the opposite. Uh, eating meat, consuming dairy, like whey protein even, consuming dairy products has shown to rapidly increase. Let's go ahead and jump to the next study. And this one also in 2021. So this is recent research. I'm not digging too far in the past to find these. So those accusing me of cherry picking studies, these are actually recent researches. So this is a 2021 study, milk consumption and prostate cancer, a systematic review of 20 significant studies. So again, another systematic review, looking at the available research and saying, it's not just one study that may have a different result than all the rest of the research. This is actually looking at all the studies together and saying, what is the general consensus? What is the overall outcome overall? Um, so the outcome in this group is, quote, a higher dairy product intake has been associated with an increased risk of developing prostate cancer. The overall positive association between milk consumption and the risk of prostate cancer development and prostate cancer mortality, not just getting prostate, but dying from it, has been well documented in multiple epidemiological studies. 
So here's the next one on this, and this is the um, dairy, and they're saying, well, is it just the calcium or is it the dairy, you know, that's causing that? So they took a look and deep dive into it, dairy foods, calcium intakes, and the risk of incidence of prostate cancer in the Adventist health. Now, looking at the Adventist uh, populations is really nice because they have a lot of vegetarians within the Adventist community. So it's a nice way to get a whole group of people that are vegetarian and or vegan to participate in a study to look at the outcomes. This is what they found. Um, they found that, uh, and I'm going to read the quote directly to you, and then I'll put up the quote on the screen in the comment section. This study results revealed that men who consumed about one of the third, one and three quarter cups of milk faced a 25% increased risk of prostate cancer compared to men who only consumed about a half a cup. Now, it was even greater in when you compared men who consumed no dairy whatsoever. This is what they found. Compared to participants consuming zero dairy, those consuming the most dairy had a 60% increased risk of developing prostate cancer. 60% just by consuming uh, less than two cups of milk a day. That's it. 60% increased risk of the number two most common cancer in men. The risk just does not, uh, just outweighs the reward. What is the reward of drinking dairy for God's sake? It's, it's made for a baby cow. It's not even made for humans. It's a horrific practice of stealing milk from the cow where they have to rape the cow, forcibly impregnate her and keep her pregnant all the time. As soon as she gives birth, they have to steal the calf away because the calf would normally drink the milk. And that's the only way we can get milk from cows in these big factory farms these days is by stealing the milk and killing the babies. It's just horrible, raping the female cows, stealing the milk meant for her child, and then killing her offspring. It's just a horrendous practice. And I don't know if you believe in karma, but... Geez, there it is, 60% risk of prostate cancer. That's men actually taking away their ability to probably, possibly sexually perform simply because they wanted to drink milk from another animal. <laughs> I don't get it, I'm sorry. Once you understand these associations, it's just phenomenal. Okay, but what about, that's dairy, what about eggs? We all know meat has issues, but what about eggs? Well, boom, here it is. This is the Harvard um, study, uh, the Harvard School of Public Health. And they showed just eating two and a half eggs per week increases the risk of prostate cancer by 81%. Is it really worth that two and a half eggs? And that's just once a week. Most people are eating two eggs a day for breakfast. <laughs> Imagine what the risk is there. If just two eggs in a week will increase it by 81%. Guys, it's not worth the risk here. I mean, if you want to be a healthy male that can sexually perform for your whole life, keep your prostate for God's sakes. Stop eating and drinking, eating eggs and meat and, and drinking dairy. It's killing you. You know, don't get angry at me for speaking the truth. Get angry at those who've been lying to you that meat makes you masculine, that eggs are high in protein. This is a lie by marketing companies trying to get you to consume their products. And they do so at the cost of your health, of your prostate, of your hair <laughs> and of your life. When you have cancer, when you're stricken down like that, you can't be a good provider to your family. You can't be a good protector to your family, to the people you care about, to your loved ones. This is not masculine. This is taking away your masculinity. Wow, what a big cost we we're doing to that. Uh, <laughs> that's just... Um, now, I'll leave you with this last study quote because it's 
it's just frightening over and over the statistics here. But one last uh, quote from the study. I'll put it up on the screen and I'll read it too as well. But from this study, quote, greater adherence to healthy plant-based diet was associated with a 16% lower risk of total prostate cancer, but more importantly, a 44% reduction in lethal prostate cancer. That's prostate cancer death or metastasis where it's growing out of control. And a 38% reduction in fatal, that is actually causing death. 38% reduction in fatal prostate cancer. Guys, this is just not worth it. Be here, be here for your family. That's why I talk about these things, not to change you. This is not about dogma. This is not about me being right and you being wrong or a diet being bad and good. It's about what are these foods actually doing to our bodies, doing to our health? That's the information I want to give you so you can make the best decision for yourself, for your health, and for your loved ones. I don't want you to suffer. Look, I suffered through clinical depression through many years of my life so badly, so intensely was I emotionally and psychologically suffering, I attempted to take my life twice. I could not stand that suffering. I couldn't take it anymore. I just wanted it to end. I don't want you to suffer. I've been through that extraordinary kind of suffering. Prostate cancer can be hugely debilitating and cause suffering. I don't want that for you. That's why I share this scientific information. So it's not me trying to convince you to do something. It's me giving you information that you can use to empower yourself to make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones so that you don't have to suffer, so they don't have to suffer watching you suffer. Suffering sucks. Why do that when you have choices that will promote your health? Look, I'm 60 years of age. I am in the best shape of my life. I've been eating nothing but plants for 37 years. Let's get beyond this meat is masculinity myth it's not. It's taking away your masculinity, taking away your prostate, taking away your ability to be the man that you were born into this body to be. That's what I want for you, to be that person, to be it for yourself, to enjoy your life without suffering, and to be there for those that count on you, depend on you. Be a good provider. Be a good protector. Be strong. But you can't be that if your prostate is destroying your life and destroying the lives of people who count on you, who love you and don't want to see you suffer. That's why I do what I do. Yes, I create products that can help. I do this because I care. I do this. I put the time and effort to research. I was the very first person to bring DM33 to market. I am still the only person in the country to uh, be able to provide this to people because it's our registered trademark material. I wanted to make sure people got the right information and get this information out to as many people so that you can be helped, both men and women, but especially guys with prostate. Number two, cancer, most common cancer in men. And it's well, I can't say it's what it is, but you know what I'm saying, that there is hope. There are approaches. So now you have some information. I hope you make good decisions to yourself. And I hope and I really want for you to use this information to make empowered choices so you don't have to go down a path of suffering. You can stop believing the food marketers who are trying to convince you that meat and dairy and eggs somehow provide some sort of masculinity when just the opposite is true and it's taking away your masculinity. That's what I want you to learn from this. But again, don't take my word for it. I give you all the research. I post the studies. I post the links. You can read them yourself. You don't have to take my word. They're there for you to read. 
empower yourself with information so you can make good choices for you and not just let cancer happen to you. Don't play ignorant. Don't say, I didn't know. That's not going to help you. That's not going to help you through life. Use this information, learn from it, and make better choices in your life so you don't have to suffer. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'll keep bringing you the information out there so that you can make the most empowered choices for your life, live a long, healthy, and prosperous life. Prosperous life. Thanks for joining me. And please like and share so we can get more of this information out to more people. The more you like, share, and comment, the more the algorithm will pick it up and the more we can get this information out to more people and hopefully help more people from suffering. Help improve the environment, help improve our health, and obviously destroying the lives, uh, destroying less lives for the animals. Thanks for joining me.